This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I am Amy Goodman in New York City, with my co-host Juan Gonzalez, joining us from his home in New Brunswick, New Jersey. More than 6,400 people have now died from coronavirus-related complications in New Jersey, at least, well, close to 114,000 cases of COVID-19 have been reported, second only to New York. Hi, Juan. Uh, hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, wishing your family very well in these very difficult times. We're going to turn right now to the post office. We look at the devastating impact the coronavirus has had on the U.S. Postal Service, which may be on the brink of collapse. This at a time when more people than ever are relying on the mail. The nation's mail service faces steep losses in revenue, warns it may not survive through summer without major federal assistance. But President Trump and his administration have repeatedly rejected attempts to bail out the Postal Service, blocking its inclusion in the $2.3 trillion stimulus bill. Trump lashed out at USPS on Friday. The Postal Service is a joke because they're handing out packages for Amazon and other internet companies, and every time they bring a package, they lose money on it. The post office, if they raise the price of a package by approximately four times, it would be a whole new ball game. But they don't want to raise because they don't want to insult Amazon, and they don't want to insult other companies, perhaps, that they like. The post office should raise the price of the packages to the companies, not to the people, to the companies. And if they did that, it would be a whole different story. The Washington Post called Trump's claim that the USPS loses money on every package it delivers for e-commerce merchants baseless. Later that day, Trump tweeted, quote, I will never let our post office fail. It's been mismanaged for years, especially since the advent of the Internet and modern-day technology. The people that work there are great, and we're going to keep them happy, healthy and well, Trump tweeted. At least 30 Postal Service workers have died from COVID-19. The U.S. Post Office has reported more than 1,200 confirmed cases of the virus. Workers report a lack of protective gear. Earlier this month, Senator Bernie Sanders discussed the crisis confronting the Postal Service with American Postal Workers Union President Mark Dimenstein. I understand that the Postmaster General has said that the Postal Service will be running out of money. Uh, in a few months, uh, the Postal Service has been dealing with long-term financial problems. What would happen to this country if the Postal Service went out of business? If the post office were allowed to die, and with this COVID pandemic and its economic impact on the Postal Service, if Congress doesn't step up and the people insured at Congress steps up, the post office could die. It, it runs on no taxpayer dollars. It runs on revenue. I'll say that again, because I think most people don't know that. The post most office. people think that it's a government agency. Explain where the revenue comes from that sustains the Postal it's Service. It's a quasi-independent government agency that only runs on revenue from postage and postal services. No taxpayer dollars. And that revenue has to be able to maintain the delivery to 160 million addresses, the retail units all over the country, often the anchor of communities, whether it's rural or urban. This comes as the attack on the U.S. Postal Service also poses a massive threat to the upcoming November presidential election. Well, for more, we are joined by the American Postal Workers Union president, Mark Dimenstein. Welcome to Democracy Now! First and foremost, can you talk about the health of the workers in the U.S. Postal Service around this country, what they're confronting now? Here in New York, we see post offices closed, mails not delivered for weeks. I talked to a Postal Service worker who was walking down the street, he was saying that they are devastated. Well, uh, first greetings. Uh, thank you so much for having us on, Amy. Um, look, it's a challenging and dangerous time. Postal workers are essential frontline workers. Uh, we salute all the frontline workers, grocery store workers, healthcare personnel, transit workers, firefighters, and so on. These, these are tough times. The Postal Service and the postal employees, proud post employees, are doing the best we can to move the mail of the people of the country, get uh, vital supplies, life-saving medicines, 
all sorts of important information. And the mission of the post office is to bind the country together, the public postal service. Uh, so obviously there's going to be gaps in, in uh, mail service. There's uh, workers who are unable to come to work because of sickness, because of quarantine, because of deep concerns uh, and, and, and uh, fears. And we have a liberally policy that helps protect the workers, protect themselves. Uh, but on the whole, the post office is still able to serve even in these very difficult times. Man, the pandemic, you know, the post office and postal workers are often taken for granted. We've been here since a year before the country was founded. Uh, it's, it's something that's always there. But in this time of pandemic, uh, I think there is a, a, a great appreciation uh, for what, po what postal workers are doing. We have had deaths. We have, it's up to, unfortunately, 45. Uh, many people have been sick and many people have been quarantined. And yet the uh, proud postal workers are still coming to work when they can and serving the American people the best we can. Well, Mark Dimenstein, I wanted to ask you this whole, we constantly hear these uh, reports that the Postal Service is in, in huge, uh, is running huge deficits every year. But could you talk about how the a previous reform that required the Postal Service to prepay all of these retirement benefits for years, what the impact that that has had, uh, the decision by Congress to impose that restriction on the on the Postal Service, what that has, uh, the impact that has had on the bottom line? Well, it definitely had an impact on the bottom line, and, and I can share that briefly, but I do want to differentiate some of the historical problems and the ongoing problems with the COVID pandemic economic crisis and how that's affecting the post office. But, uh, but as a little background, in 2006, Congress passed a law called the Postal Accountability Enhancement Act. And they did something to the public postal service that no other government agency and no other private company has ever had to do. And it's just too onerous. Uh, they forced the post office to pay uh, 75 years into the future uh, and within a 10 year period, 75 years uh, into the future, retiree health benefits. So that's for workers that not only did not work at the post office yet, but weren't even born yet. And that's where so much of the news stories each year about the Postal Service being in debt came from. It was a manufactured on paper crisis. The reality is if you, you took out that pre-funding mandate, uh, the post office actually did quite well. Uh, the post office is not set up as a business. It's not set up to pack billions of dollars in the bank and enrich shareholders or CEOs. It's set up to serve the people of the country. And it was doing that uh, 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 well, even with the challenges. But if I can fast forward to now, I think it's important to separate out some of the ongoing problems, some of the changing mail habits, some of the opportunities that the post office has to bring in new revenue like, like postal banking and so on. But talk about what's really happening right now, because whatever happened in 2006, even if it didn't happen, the COVID pandemic is having a huge, devastating, dire impact on postal revenue. As, as the lead-in talked about, there's no taxpayer dollars that goes into the post office. It runs strictly on the revenue of postal and postal products. And that revenue has to be able to be enough to carry out the mission of what we call the universal service mandate. Every address, every person, no matter who we are and where we live, a great small d democratic right. Getting mail, packages, six days a week now, sometimes seven. And what's happened in this pandemic, uh, and it's, it's economic devastation throughout the entire country and world. Uh, but what's happened specifically to the Postal Service is the, the mail has precipitously dropped off. Just think about it. What, what restaurant is sending coupons through the mail? What small business is saying, come to my business, uh, we have a sale going on? Well, the business is closed. Even grandpa like me can't go out and buy the birthday card for the grandkids and put it in the mail because the store is closed or we're uh, 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 shelter at home. So it's had a huge impact. And what's happening is a lot of the mail, uh, uh, the marketing mail, for example, has dropped off almost 50 percent. And that's going to continue to happen. Packages are up some, but how long is that going to last when 25 million people and more to come are unemployed? 
So what's happening is it's there's a fork in the road. The Postal Service will actually run out of money, whether it's this summer, whether it's early fall. The revenue just isn't there strictly based on COVID. So what we've asked, and it's not just the we of the postal units, uh, the, the Postal Board of Governors, which sets policy, which is a majority Republican board right now, has unanimously asked for robust relief, not a bailout. This is for the people of the country. This doesn't go into any shareholders, any CEOs. Uh, but to make up that lost revenue so the post office can weather this crisis and still at the same time serve the people of the country, both in ordinary times and and in this time of uh, crisis. So it's it's serious, it's real, uh, and, uh, and again, it's very uh, focused on the COVID pandemic economic impact. And in addition to the uh, potential or the possibility of uh, additional help as a result of COVID from Congress, what about these, could you talk a little bit more about these proposals of reformed ways for new, uh, possible reforms for new revenues for the post office, uh, specifically this whole issue of uh, banking or what us other people call federal reserve accounts uh, that would be used through individual post offices? Look, the, the post office is a wonderful national treasure in every community from the most remote rural portions of the country to the uh, most densely populated urban centers and neighborhoods. And as such, and again, its mission is to bind the people together. So there's, there's so much more that the post office can do. Uh, it already does a certain amount of financial services. It could do a lot more. It, 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 it even basic paycheck cashing, uh, ATMs and postal service, money transfers. All of that would be a counter to this predatory payday lending, check cashing industry. There's tens of millions of people that are either unbanked or underbanked, meaning that they have no bank account at all or they end up in this, what they call this alternative, uh, we call it the loan sharking um, uh, predatory uh Industry, so there are there are opportunities there to serve the people. It would bring in revenue. Uh, postal workers are eager eager to perform those kind of things. There's uh, there could be all sorts of license uh, 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 licensing. Uh, there could be uh, you know uh, internet access. There could be cop uh, the uh, copying services. There's all sorts of things that the post office uh, can do and should do. But in order to get there. Uh, we have to make sure that we have a public postal service. And that now is really up for grabs because clearly we have an administration that would like to, uh, and, and it's clear, they have an agenda. They would like to sell the, the public postal service off to private corporations, privatize it, and turn what's the service of the people into, and everybody has the same equal access to, uh, turn it into a profit-making entity where whether people get mail service or not, uh, and at what cost, and at what kind of surcharges would depend on whether somebody can make a quick dollar. And again, the post office is set up on a nonprofit basis to serve every single person. So this administration has an agenda, and they're shamefully using this crisis to carry it out rather than set policy. I mean, here you had a, 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 a incentive package of $2.2 trillion. The corporations got $500 billion. The Postal Board of Governors asked for $25 billion of that uh, Mark, $500 I, billion. Mark, I wanted to ask get. you also, we just have a little bit of time left, but I wanted to ask you about this, uh, this allegation of President Trump that Amazon is getting sweetheart deals from the Postal, uh, postal Service and also uh, the possibilities he's raising about giving access to Americans' mailboxes for the private carrier industry? Well, look, every, uh, every agency with authority, the Postal Regulatory Commission and others, has debunked that myth that the Postal Service is losing money on Amazon and other packages. It, it, it just isn't true. Uh, and for a uh, president of the United States to tell the people of this country and the postal workers who are on the front lines that the postal workers, that the post office is a joke, uh, something that belongs to everybody in this country, it belongs to the people, 
That is the uh, absolute insult of insults. And it's not a laughing matter to the people of the country, the veterans that rely on their medicines to come from VA. Uh, the Postal Service in normal times delivers 1.2 billion uh, packages of medicine and, and uh, so on. So it's, uh, and I'm sorry, you're, I, I, I forgot your second part of that question, if you could say it again. Uh, and also the, the possibility of bringing in private carriers to deliver on, in regular post office boxes. Well, look, the, 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 your, our mailbox is an, is an extension of our living room. It's part of our home. It's private. Nobody can walk through our front door. Nobody now has access to that mailbox. It's the last, really, it's, it's, it's the last holdout of true private communications. The internet's not, uh, 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 Facebook is not, tweeting is not, and so on. So that's what's called the sanctity of the mail. And if the post office was to let die by this administration, we don't think that the people of the country are gonna put up with that. They're not gonna let it be stolen. But if it were to die, part of what would die with it is that right to privacy and the right to what we call the sanctity of the mail. So that's an absurd idea, uh, and we don't think the people of the country are going to buy that idea. But again, we're not going to we're not going to have these debates if we don't call Congress, if we don't write Congress, if we don't email Congress, if we don't get and sign all the petitions going around. Uh, the uh, listeners can go to APWU.org. There are petitions there Mark, demanding that Congress Mark. step up and do the right thing. I wanted to ask you about the disproportionate impact that um, this threat against the post office has. Actor and activist Danny Glover wrote a piece uh, last year in USA Today, headlined, My Parents yeah. Proudly Work for the U.S. Postal Service, Don't Destroy It. In it, he wrote, For black families like mine, the Postal Service has long been one of the few reliable paths to the middle class. Today, the Postal Service remains a critical source of good jobs for African Americans. Black employees make up 28.6 percent of the postal workforce, more than double their share of the U.S. population. So, if you can talk about this, and then I want to ask you about mail at home. Well, the, the, um, we, we are very proud that the Postal Service is such a diverse workforce. Uh, how many workers really truly have equal pay for equal work, uh, fair hiring practices, and so on? And because of our union contracts, we have equal pay for uh, uh, equal work. And, and the uh, uh, postal clerks, the people that you see when you go to a post office and buy stamps and bring packages and so on, the, the uh, postal clerks are now over 50 percent women, equal pay for equal work. As you mentioned, it, it has been a wonderful opportunity for many of the African-American workers, uh, Asian workers, Latino workers, and white workers. And we're all in it together. Uh, and uh, da Danny Glover, activist actor Danny Glover, is very clear that without the opportunity that his parents had, and they helped make that opportunity, they were union activists themselves. It wasn't always a good job. It was fought for. Uh, he's very clear that the opportunities he had in life were largely based on his parents' opportunity to make a decent living and give their family the uh, opportunity and path that he was able to take. 